Hello. Um, so the next presentation after the break uh, is going to be Patricia Gass. And uh, she's worked, she has worked relentlessly to create this whole event. So round of applause, that's the first thing. Uh, and she also works for Nasika Foundation, educational organization uh, here in Krakow uh, that uses LARPs as one of the educational tools. And uh, Zbyszek is going to join her for a very short while, so I'm just going to give the mic to you. Good luck. Thank you very much. So, uh, when LARP meets climate change, or the other way around, uh, because Actually, the climate change meets us all the time, and this is a reality and situation we need to deal with. And uh, LARP might be a helpful tool or a bridge uh, to adapt to a new reality. Um, and in this uh, very short talk, uh, uh, mainly, I want to point out uh, different ways of looking into um, LARP how can be used for a climate change that it doesn't have to be something what we are thinking usually for educational LARPs at schools that yeah let's send kids to pick up the trash because it's Earth Day or something like that so how to make it in a way it would be engaging it would be fascinating and it wouldn't have this um, formal school touch so let's talk uh, about the LARP as an act of civic engagement and also interpretation of culture text and political reality. And the last and the most obvious one, educational game raising knowledge, attitudes and skills. And of course, all of that in the context of a climate change. Um, we've been talking uh, on uh, other different sessions uh, about LARP as a medium as a tool, as a community. There are so many different definitions, but can it be act of civic engagement, LARP itself? So we want to end up with some hot ideas, maybe you will have some, um, of games that will be played all around Europe, supported by two international projects, LARP for Climate, which is going on right now, and we have uh, partners also here who are with us, and also Experience the Catastrophe, another project which is currently cooking. And you can jump in. So uh, that's why we can uh, make talk business afterwards, and future partners are warmly welcome. So in, uh, in a way, it's also a buy. So we are coming back to an act of civic engagement. What can be act of civic engagement? Anybody has an idea? Let's make it more interactive, perhaps. Any idea? Yes. Yes, a beautiful uh, e uh, example, a protest, it was said. Um, protest is definitely one of them. So when we uh, look uh, at the act of uh, civic engagement, we can look through uh, different dimensions um, of knowledge, skill, efficacy, value, responsibility, and the commitment. Um, for example, on the, the level of knowledge, it's about do we know who are ruling our district? What are the uh, local laws? Um, where are the uh, resources or departments we need to go to, to talk? Skill is can we fill the form to make a petition? Um, efficacy, that actually we can um, in an efficient way do these things, to talk, to, to get what we want. And the value. Like why we are doing this, not because we are just mean and want to be a, uh, mean for our neighbor, that's why we will talk with the city council just to cut uh, the part or something. It's because we have values that we want to make the place better, we want to uh, contribute to the common good. And responsibility and commitment, those two are very, very important in the act of civic engagement that we feel 
uh, shared responsibility. And it is long lasting. It's not that, it's just an act that, oh, I just felt like it to help for a moment. It's, it's deepened and um, anchored in values that I truly believe that this is my small um, uh, place, my, my local community. And uh, uh, from uh, some parts, it's like uh, that when things are not that tangible, for example, like climate change, it's so hard to feel like, how can I contribute? How, how can I help? With a small things, uh, it's much easier. But with such a huge topic, which is quite vague, and we don't know how to grasp it, how to um, tackle it, it, it might be uh, more problematic. So when uh, we, we said the protest, other acts of civic engagement uh, can be just volunteering, beautiful thing, activism, different form of activism, community gardens, citizens' assemblies, uh, civic budget, and many, many other forms. But LARP, in what way LARP can be act of civic engagement? And this is something we are trying to explore. Can we use it? Can we in some way uh, help those things which are up there with the civic budget, with a citizen's assembly through LARP? So maybe LARP can be a tool which will lead us to uh, uh, an act of civic engagement, but can it be itself? So this is also the question which we were trying to, um, to tackle, to, to think about it, that through a LARP can we have an impact on our small local community in some way? For example, if we would um, try to uh, bridge activism and LARP, for example, in a uh, performance, pervasive LARP, which uh, is happening in the city, um, so not in a closed uh, walls, or uh, some kind of a flash mob or a performance that is included in LARP and is uh, a part of it, then if this flash mob, if this performance, which is part of the LARP, is and is on the topics which is also part of uh, uh, trying to, to support and uh, develop our local community, then it would be act of civic engagement itself, LARP, not just facilitating, not just as a tool like, oh, we can just design a LARP which is talking about the civic budget to teach people how to write our or how to do a civic budget so we will have more sustainable and green solutions in the city but how to do it in a way that people would feel it um, inside. Yesterday, uh, on one of the sessions of design sessions, we were talking about uh, lie games and uh, broccoli in chocolate, which means that sometimes we are uh, giving people something what is like a, a game, but actually is uh, much more uh, hidden um, think which is uh, not not the game at all. It's more that uh, it is an exam or filling a form or a kind of boring stuff which we are just trying to cover up uh, within that this is a game. So this is also a, a question for this how we can make it so engaging that this is not a, a broccoli covered with chocolate. That this is something truly tasty, this is something true, and this is that it's, it's a real act of civic engagement. Another one, LARP as interpretation of culture, text, and political reality. So, for example, newspapers uh, or media. Uh, culture texts are everywhere, and uh, some people know it best that they are even studying culture text and we are surrounded by them. Um, uh, how we interpret it? Do we have proper tools for it? How can we interpret a political reality? Uh, all the news which are coming to us and how much all of this is connected uh, with uh, climate change? How much do we realize what is the situation? What we should believe, what we shouldn't? And of course we know that to understand and use better 
um, this culture, text, and political reality. Logical fallacies and biases, they are very helpful. They can teach us, in a way, how to see what is fake, what is manipulation, uh, what uh, are the argumentation which are uh, just leading us um, some sideways and so on. So yes, this kind, or reports and credible uh, sources. Those are helping us to decode this uh, culture text and, and also understand better this uh, reality. Critical thinking, all the things connected with it. And of course, media literacy. But again, LARP, in what way? Is it, again, that we will just try to use it, that through LARP we will go um, to media literacy, to critical thinking, or maybe how to uh, read these reports or how to look for these credible uh, sources. Or maybe through LARP we will learn uh, all these logical fallacies and biases. Why not? And you might ask, like, so how is it connected with the climate change? For me, it's crucial because, um, again, and I will be uh, uh, all the time thinking about uh, the picking trash. Picking trash is not uh, uh, just uh, uh, the thing which we can do or recycling. Like Yes, it's beautiful, the grassroots movement, and we should do this, but also we tend to forget the bigger picture, the, the, that uh, we as citizens, uh, if we want to go uh, into this act of... Um, civic engagement, and to feel that really we have an impact, uh, then we need to uh, think big. We need to uh, start thinking how are the connections and correlation between all of this. And, and this is also the answer, like that if we will try to include in our LARPs those things which are helping us interpret the culture um, text, this in a consequence will much, much, much later help with uh, um, climate literacy. And climate literacy is understanding what is the situation, understanding the report, understanding the, um, the, the whole uh, consequences and situation we are in. Uh, and the current problem we have is that either we have uh, two complicated sources with lots of data, uh, which is uh, really difficult to understand, especially for young people, or we have just a catchy uh, phrases that, yeah, save the world. But it's hard to find something in between, something what can be a easy and clear um, a path, a way where we can understand uh, in, in what way we uh, can help, but in a systematic way. Stop, stop, just checking. And the last part, which is, uh, very important, but also kind of obvious, is uh, LARP as an educational game, rising knowledge, attitudes, and skills. Um, of course, uh, as we are on a LARPing conference, and, and we all know that with uh, at the touching the uh, cognitive and affective and behavioral uh, parts, and uh, uh, in the context of a climate change, it's really easy to go for each of them. Uh, because we can uh, design LARPs which are much more uh, focus on the knowledge, with thinking uh, like how to find uh, facts, how to find the reliable sources, as we were talking before, um, and learn them in a funny way. For example, with uh, uh, one LARP um, we designed, we had a gather town uh, tool. And in one room, uh, it's a, a virtual tool where you, are, you have an avatar and you walk through um, different rooms. In one room, there were uh, different um, TV and uh, sets which you can click and then you see the reports or, or things that people can read. Uh, and it's in a, a mm, more understanding and, and clearer way so that you have fun while reading all these uh, climate facts. So you can transfer knowledge in a, a more engaging way. Attitudes. Attitudes uh, is my favorite, and um, I think mm, and believe that uh, LARP is especially good at this, uh, that we can design LARPs which are dealing with emotions. For example, nowadays, um, uh, climate depression or cli climate grieving 
is a thing among uh, a young people that people feel anxiety and uh, uncertainty for this word nowadays. So to try to deal with these feelings, like I don't know if I want to uh, to uh, go and study and work, have family or children in this world. This world is dying. We are dying out. Uh, Extinction rebellion. Uh, the, the, the thing is that. Um, there's so many feelings we need to deal with, connected with a, a climate change, that having it in LARP could be very helpful. And skills as well. Uh, with this, we can uh, very, very easily use it, uh, LARP for uh, segregating uh, um, trash uh, by different uh, game mechanics or many, many other things uh, which uh, can train in the skills. And examples of this. Uh, for example, Fortitude, uh, now they can try this for future uh, cooperation 2021. Um, uh, where is a climate peak uh, um, meeting and uh, they need to decide the priorities uh, for the next um, decades, uh, what energy um, will be chosen and so on. And this, this thing is um, from one side, I would say, uh, more mostly tackling the knowledge and skills. Attitudes as well, but not that much because um, it's not designed to have a very, very high level of immersion or uh, heavy emotion. It's uh, more with negotiations. Another thing, and this goes to our uh, Estonian partners, is uh, practical guidelines for the integration of environmental LARP into the formal and non-formal education in Estonian Russian border area, Tartu 2020. It's a beautiful report showing uh, different uh, how the climate uh, education and LARP are used um, in those countries. And uh, the newest thing which I can recommend you, a long story, a deep type, uh, time LARP, Laura uh, De Becke, Oslo School of Environmental Humanities, there is a PDF uh, of it, you can check it. So, educational climate games, they are a thing now. They are everywhere, all of them. And fun fact, look, this is 2021, 2020, 2022. What is the common thing? And it's a pandemic, I don't know. Uh, if, if it's a moment that we started to think about it or that the climate change started to be more important. But that's the time uh, we are living in. And uh, it's, it's fairly visible that they are not uh, old things. And that's why um, to go further into this path, to see LARP as not only act of engagement or this uh, help for interpreting um, uh, the, the cultural text or the, the political reality, uh, or educational game, we went through the LARP for Climate uh, project. And for that, I would ask as Bishek for a moment to say about this beautiful partnership, which is continuing the path I've been talking about for the last 20 minutes. The project uh, started very spontaneously. What? Here? Okay. Uh, actually, it started. Chris is uh, with us uh, in the room, <laughs> and uh, he's the guy who wrote to me that he wants to make an interview about uh, educational uh, narrative games. So I made it. And uh, when I was explaining uh, him how should we design uh, uh, educational LARP, I found out two things. One, that I suddenly am very clear about it, and it went per the interview fe went perfectly well. Second, uh, that uh, I didn't implement it if, uh, in any of the games I have designed yet. So, uh, and out suddenly, next week when I was on the walk, uh, the idea of the let's say climate peak 2050 came to my mind, like also suddenly the whole of it. 
Uh, and by s of course, I didn't have time to, to, to get involved in another project, but a month later, when I was coaching a local branch of Fridays for Future Poland uh, from Krakow and the surroundings, they told me, oh, there is another wave of pandemics and we want to do something educational, like climate education is one of our like core principles, but we are locked in our houses, the schools are closed and we don't know what to do. So somehow I connected all those dots and said, what if we do a game? Uh, a role-playing game which can be played also online in case the pandemic never ends and we can somehow you know to have fun while doing the climate education and it so happens that we know uh, how to design LARPs somehow a bit at least and they know uh, something about why the climate is changing and what if something could be done to stop it so we connected all of this it took us a few months uh, and we came up with a scenario of the LARP that uh, was uh, was played around 20 times by now uh, in a few countries, including uh, Greece, Estonia, uh, not only Poland. Next time is going to Sweden. Uh, I got the news that we will play it on the Knutepunkt uh, conference. So uh, I really want you know to work on it and see. Laila like to perfect all the details until that happens. And with this little idea, I just made a post uh, somewhere on the Facebook group that we had such a game. And so if somebody wants it, uh, they can print it and play it by themselves. And then I received a few, a few questions. What if we do something together? Uh, I remember from Edery that, hey, we also have done like a dual about climate and so on. So we also connected even more dots. And that's how this uh, LARP for Climate project came out. It's a uh, formally Erasmus Plus strategic partnership in the field of youth for innovation and uh, we aim at producing a, a, f a couple of LARP scenarios that will be played by, uh, by different organizations, not only us. And I think the goal is like Patty said at the, at the start of this uh, presentation, but also Piotr Milewski and Alessandro before about this guerrilla LARP which is like um, you need the support of the local community actually to make your labs more meaningful. That's how I understood the guerrilla idea, but also the uh, by Piotr about kamikaze or anti-kamikaze design that it should be like, it could be repeated. It can be made better and better all the time and used uh, wider and wider. That's actually what we want to implement with the, uh, with the LARP for climate. So we want the other, basically we want to make easy for us. In other words, we want others to run our LARPs, not to do this by ourselves all the time. And until now I see it's working because a few people already played it and we will do it even better, design it better. and we haven't done like a nice looking web page yet and didn't advertise it. So once this is done, I'm pretty confident that the love for climate idea can spread. And uh, let's go with visions because I have little time left. Uh, the vision is that not only people play it as fun or in schools, but we can actually do some civic dialogue while playing a narrative game. Once I succeeded to make a LARP for office workers of the municipality of Krakow and for two hours they left their books and phones and they were actually you know, running around the table, shouting, doing some theatrical workshops and later playing the roles of diplomats and the climate peak in 2050 and they actually enjoyed it. It was a big surprise. I thought that we'll just sit stiff in the, in the chairs and that's all. They like to play, but these were only the officials. We also, I want to do this for teachers, like a training for teachers with the Krakow municipality. And hopefully at some like climate uh, civic panels and other like uh, ecological film festivals to want it like make it like a performance, a happening, an event that combines people from different social groups. So they actually talk as fictional characters, but engage uh, within a story. And this can actually be continued as a dialogue. How, what can we do here in Krakow as the youth and the, and the decisive older people and the teachers and just the parents and everyone who is living in Krakow? How can we connect or break the ice between us by uh, just playing a game which is themed uh, about the climate change. So this is the vision and I hope that we will reach it soon. Thank you. I have mine. Um, 
it's just exactly as he said. But in the more tangible way, there will be four LARPs you can expect with four different approaches. And they will be played in Greece, in Poland, in Norway, and in Estonia. And maybe in your country if you want, because it will be an open source. Um, and uh, there is lots of uh, ways to tackle it. Uh, I'm very keen on the uh, tragedy of the common goods. This is uh, recently, I'm, I'm really digging more into it especially when they destroyed our uh, uh, community garden. And uh, uh, limited resources and extinction, climate grief, this is also one of our partners' to uh, topic, very important. And it's uh, also mentioned many, many times by uh, young people from uh, uh, Fridays for Future. Recycling, of course, media literacy, another topic which we are tackling uh, into it. Greenwashing, very important part. Diplomacy and politics, because we just cannot avoid it. We cannot go into a small things without thinking in a bigger picture, as I was uh, saying it before. So those are just some of uh, the topics we are covering, but we are uh, open for more. And especially for the, uh, the next part of it, um, which will be experiencing catastrophe project, that's why we are really, really interesting that uh, in the way like what would be your approach to a, a climate change lab what kind of lab would you design what are the topics uh, in this big big box uh, of a very vague thing that that actually we can uh, put in a very tangible way that people can feel that this is an act of a civic engagement it's not just a lab so any idea what would you be hyped about? If you would be, or uh, if you already designed. If so, you can uh, always write to us. Uh, also, uh, on the streaming, you can write down your ideas, especially that we really want to continue. We really want to brainstorm. We want to add more things so we will uh, break the patterns that it's just the one way of uh, uh, saving the world. Yes, there is this, uh, so to break um, this pathetic way of it, just to start doing things uh, which are uh, meaningful. Uh, thank you very much, and let's uh, stay in touch. Uh, let's uh, keep uh, uh, writing and uh, throwing ideas into uh, uh, us, and we see each other on the next session. Thank you.